मन में मैं बहुत प्रसन्न हूं कारण क्योंकि इतना सुदूर इलाके में आप लोग यहाँ आके और यहाँ बस रहे और इस समाज के साथ मिलकर काम कर रहे ऐसा आप सब का दर्शन करने का आपसे कुछ बातचीत करने का सौभाग्य मिला है आई ब्रिंग यू द वॉमेस्ट ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम इंडिया आई थैंक ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर वेलकमिंग मी एंड माई डेलीगेशन विथ सच राम एंड अफेक्शन आई एम अकम्पनिड बाई श्री संजीव कुमार बालियान मिनिस्टर फॉर स्टेट इन मैर हजबेंड्री डेयरिंग एंड फिशरीज एज फ्रॉम उत्तर प्रदेश एंड श्री राम विचार नेतम मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट अपर हाउस दैट इज राज्यसभा इन इंडिया ही हेज फ्रॉम छत्तीसगढ़ स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया आई एम एक्सट्रीमली डिलाइटेड टू विजिट दिस ब्यूटिफुल सिटी ऑफ मरोनी इन द वार्म वाटर्स ऑफ इंडियन ओशन आई एम थैंकफुल टू द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ कमरोस फॉर द वार्म हॉस्पिटैलिटी एक्सटेंडेड टू मी एंड माई डेलीगेशन फ्रॉम टुमारो आई लुक फॉरवर्ड to a fruitful interaction with the president azari asomani and his cabinet ministers and honorable speaker of the national assembly and other distinguished ladies and gentlemen from kamaros i was also presently surprised and happy the president himself came to the airport not only himself but he brought his entire cabinet he brought uh, his entire cabinet and also governors and also to my surprise all the ambassadors who are situated here in kamaros that speaks of the love affection for india by this great beautiful country <laughs> and also they have given a privilege to me that means to our country to address their parliament tomorrow you are all aware india is the largest and one of the oldest parliamentary democracies in the world so an opportunity to meet greet and also to speak members of parliament of other countries is really an honor and also a privilege i am also aware that the kamarians of indian origin have been in kamaros for over the last 100 years 100 years i am glad to know that kamarian brothers and sisters have accepted you as part of their larger kamarian family with great warmth and affection due to which you have settled down well in this country i am impressed to learn that kamaros has a small but active indian diaspora and i am happy to note that despite being only about 250 in number you have made significant contribution in various fields including social and economic some of you have attained positions of excellence in your respective professions i am extremely happy to note that you are providing leadership in various sectors i would like to compliment and congratulate all of you for this achievement i am happy to know that the indian cultural heritage has been kept alive by you and the most indian festivals are celebrated by the entire community i am happy that the indian community enjoys a reputation of being a peace loving community and has been able to assimilate well with the locals we were all aware we are a ancient civilization one of the oldest civilizations in the world and still thriving civilization because the basic philosophy of indian civilization is vasudhaika kutumbakam the entire world the entire world is one family share and care is the core of indian philosophy that's why our indian philosophy is flourishing even now and we are a peace loving country in spite of being one of the largest countries in the world in spite of being one of the oldest civilizations in spite of being known as vishwa guru once upon a time where students from across the globe used to come to nalanda takshashila and other places to study 
India and also having around 20% plus GDP of the world at that time. India never attacked any country, never was an aggressor on any country. <laughs> and we don't uh, believe in colonization. We don't, we want only peaceful coexistence. We want the entire world to live in peace and happiness and prosperity. As you all know, despite the global slowdown, India continues to be one of the fastest growing large economies and aspires to become US dollar 5 trillion economy by 2024-25. Even latest report, in spite of world global slowdown, India is still on the move. You have see, might have seen yesterday the statistics were given. The American growth rate is somewhere around 2.2. UK is around 1.7 or 2. And even other countries also they are around that 2, 3. Only India and China are growing at 6.1 percent. And I am sure, and I am sure, and I am sure in the coming days once again we will become the largest economy in the world and then we will be able to reach even 8 percent also. The government has initiated several measures to boost economic growth. Only recently the corporate tax has been slashed steeply which is expected to spur further investments. I have been going around the globe earlier as minister, now as vice president. Everywhere there is a lot of enthusiasm, interest and admiration for India. They want to know India, they want to invest in India, that is the interest across the globe. An Indian government led by the Prime Minister Narendra Bhai Modi has taken reforms and the Prime Minister has given a three-line advice, mantra, we call it as reform, perform and transform. Transforming the nation. Transformation. Transformation of the lives of the people. And we have a lot of schemes, make in India, skill India, digital India, clean India, incubation, innovation, new ideas, startups, stand-ups, a lot of new initiatives have been taken by the Prime Minister. You will be happy to know that now India is totally electrified. All villages in India are electrified. That's a major achievement. Because India, India's size, 29 states, 130 crore population, is not an easy thing. But the government, with the support of people, centre and state governments together, they brought total electrification. Doing business in India is not only lucrative to investors but also becoming simpler. The India has jumped 65 positions on the World Bank's ease of doing business index and now placed at the 77th rank among the 119 country, 90 countries. Our policy now is earlier people used to complain about red tape, means delay. Now the government policy is red carpet. Whoever want to invest in India, a red carpet is right to all of them. That is the policy. <laughs> Narendra Bhai Modi, he received a clear mandate second time and from the people and then he is very much committed to take the country forward by various reforms. The Edelman Trust Barometer for 2018 said India is among the most trusted nations globally when it comes to government, business, NGOs and media. A host of path-breaking reforms have been initiated, including the transformational tax reform. The goods and service tax is the world's largest revolutionary taxation reform that has taken place. It's called as GST. One nation, one tax. One nation, one market approach. We are moving towards that system. The tax base has widened and tax compliance have improved considerably with a jump of 80.5% taking assessees to 6.85 crore in 17-18. Propelled by the mantra of reform, perform and transform, India has become one of the most open economies of the world for foreign direct investment. India is also augmenting its infrastructure at an unprecedented rate almost 27 kilometers of national highway 
and 134 kilometers of rural roads are being built every day every day 27 kilometers national highway 134 kilometers of rural roads are being built every day india is now world's third largest aviation market anand 30 new destinations are going to be linked by aviation the udan scheme that envisages affordable air travel has added 40 more airports to the already existing anand 3 airports an ambitious plan to build next generation infrastructure including 100 smart cities 10 green field airports seven high speed train corridors five major ports highways a nationwide broadband connectivity linking our villages and urban areas is underway under bharat mala pariyojana 60000 kilometers of national highway are being built on the renewable energy front we have set a target to produce and 75 gigawatt of clean energy by 2022 because we are fortunate to have sunlight and then we are trying to take advantage and the prime minister along with france together has taken lead to form the international solar alliance i am happy that your president here from kamaros he also visited attended the solar conference and uh, encouraging solar we have provided electricity in more than 2.57 crore houses under the pradhan mantri saubhagya yojana all villages are now electrified in india our youth are driving the digital revolution and powering the startup ecosystem 3ds which are democracy demand and demographic dividend are scripted in india's history indian diaspora is the fourth d in the picture all of you have a role in the development of our country we want you to join india's journey towards growth and prosperity my dear sisters and brothers africa has been accorded top priority by government of india and declared as a focus continent of our relations with africa has intensified in the last 5 years an unprecedented 32 ongoing visits have taken place at the level of president vice president and prime minister something unheard 32 countries of africa has been visited by indian leadership nearly 100 african leaders have visited india including 41 for the african summit we have decided to open 18 new embassies in africa taking the total number of indian missions in africa to 47 our trade has registered 12% increase from the previous year and is at us dollar 69 billion india is now the fifth largest investor in africa with a cumulative investment of us dollar 54 billion during indian africa summit 3 prime minister narendra bhai modi has announced 10 billion line of credit 600 million grant and 50000 scholarships for africa over a period of 5 years we have already approved implemented 6.5 billion worth of line of credits already implemented 700 million grants exceeding the target and given over 40000 scholarships so far our assistance is demand driven and is based on terms and conditions that are reasonable and comfortable and do not create indebtedness you are already aware of the various steps that the government of india is taking towards enhancing our relationship with comoros tomorrow when i am meeting the honorable president of comoros will be signing some important and landmark agreement an important development is setting up a vocational training center here by government of india the vocational training center will give much needed philip to upgrade the skills of comorian youth to several sectors comoros is rich in natural resources and we are happy to assist in value addition of these rich resources so that the comorian economy also become self relevant reliant sisters and brothers it is indeed a great pleasure to be here in africa where mahatma gandhi ji lived for more than 20 years and drew sustenance to fight against discrimination and colonial domination with nothing but truth and non violence as his weapons gandhi ji was an inspiration to all mankind and he has spent more than two decades it was also south africa that he came across discrimination apartheid and gross injustice being perpetrated on human beings as we pay tribute to mahatma on his 150th birthday anniversary 
we should not forget the moment that was this soil africa which gave the nourishment and inspiration and made mohandas karamchand gandhi as mahatma gandhi this was this that is the importance of this place it was africa the transformed his vision and gave greater clarity to his life mission before i conclude i would like to share with you about the forthcoming pravasa bharatiya divas 2021 you are already invited to you are all invited to attend the pravasa bharatiya divas and i would like to thank each and every one of you spread over across cameroos who have made it here to be present please keep the flags of india and cameroos flying high in cameroos my suggestion is you are in cameroos follow the rules regulations laws of this country because they have given you <laughs> hospitality it is our duty to go by the rules and regulations of the host country and at the same time i suggest to all of you please remember your motherland your culture your heritage and your language wherever i go in india outside i tell people to remember five things one everyone should remember his mother mother includes of course father also mother who has given you beautiful birth you should never forget second janma bhumi the place which has given birth to you you should never forget the janma bhumi third is the mother tongue the language that has come from mother's womb you should never forget it at home among yourselves you must practice you must speak in your mother tongue outside you can speak in any language no problem one should learn as many languages as possible but nobody should forget their mother tongue mother tongue is like eyesight the other language is like spectacles if you have eyesight then the spectacles will work kyunki kyunki bhasha aur bhavana ek sath chalta hai you will be able to articulate better in your mother tongue it is gujarati tamil telugu kannada malayali marathi assami punjabi bhojpuri dogri urdu whatever it is your mother tongue you should feel proud of it and wherever you are there at home among yourselves you should speak in your language outside you should speak in other language nothing wrong in learning english nothing wrong in learning french nothing wrong in learning even chinese learn as many languages as possible but do not forget your mother tongue and four three do not forget your motherland the country which has given you the beautiful birth you should never forget your country and always keep its interest of safety security and sovereignty in mind and then you must also remember the guru who has given you the knowledge because guru is always important even after google after net still guru is important because something goes wrong with google or net the guru has to be called so guru has to be remembered forever that's my advice to particularly to the younger generation across the globe and today as i told you your motherland india is on the move feel proud of the same and we the vast country and we are moving forward some people jealous of our development they try to propagate negative things about our country india is the ideal secular country in the world i can say number 1 secular country <laughs> where we have the largest minority in the world in india and they are occupying positions like president chief justice air chief marshal army chief from minority community nowhere in the world such things happen and also india is the country where there is total freedom to the people and india is a country where various traditions various cultures are respected india is a country where you have 760 languages all languages are respected even parliament for information now 22 languages are there members are allowed to speak in any language and there is a simultaneous translation to give importance to the different languages of the country we do it and whatever we do is for the development of the people and we want, we are a peace loving nation and we want to spread the message of peace mahatma gandhi life itself is a message 
because he always believed in non violence preached non violence and also preached peace because peace is the prerequisite for progress without peace you cannot achieve progress and then if you have tension you cannot pay attention that's why peace is very important so we are a peaceful country and wherever we go we want to live peacefully along with others and we believe in social harmony some people here and there in a big country small incident happens some people try to portray them and then blow it out of proportion and try to bring bad name to our country because the country is moving forward is becoming strong and all what happened recently even in jammu kashmir is an internal affair it is part of india and some administrative arrangement has been made nothing has changed and in kashmir is an integral part of india and they have been participating in elections and they are getting elected electing their own representatives so some people unfortunately one of our neighbor is trying to create problems unnecessary which they will never succeed because people are all united there may be local issues etc whatever it is but because as we have the freedom we have the free press and we have parliamentary democracy and we are capable of resolving issues if any but our neighbor is aiding abetting funding training terrorists terrorism is enemy of humanity terrorism is enemy of humanity it has no religion no religion worth the name whether it is hinduism or buddhism or islam or christianity nobody endorses terror some people try to mislead by bringing religion into terror and give it a religious color let us be aware of such forces and try to isolate them that's my advice to all of you once again all the best and i would i would convey the best wishes from our indian community back home india to all of you for a bright future thank you very much namaskar jai hind